China is getting too close for comfort. News broke on Thursday that the Labour MP and former shadow cabinet minister Barry Gardiner accepted more than £425,000 in donations from a Chinese spy. MI5 issued an interference alert to MPs about the activities of Christine Li, a Chinese national, a top lawyer who first began making financial contributions to British politicians 17 years ago. Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House of Commons, sent out the security alert and said Miss Lee has been engaged in political interference activities on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party, targeting MPs and associated political entities, including a former all-party group on the Chinese community in Britain. It also emerged that Mr Gardner had employed Miss Lee's son as a diary manager in his parliamentary office until he resigned on Thursday. Now, that role entitled him to a pass in the House of Commons and he was able to roam around Parliament. Now, this woman, Miss Lee, has close links to the Chinese Communist Party and she's been on quite the journey. Here she is, photographed with Barry Gardner himself, Bazza to his friends. Doesn't he look nice in a kilt? How about uh, this one when they're out campaigning? just outside the Palace of Westminster there. She also met Jeremy Corbyn. Jez, we can. She met Ken Livingston. Well, we've cut off the best part of his face, but that is Red Ken, let me promise you that. Tom Watson. And last but not least, Keith Vaz. Blimey, this woman's got worse taste in friends than Prince Andrew. Responsible for much of our critical infrastructure, including 3 and 4G mobile networks, luckily not 5G anymore, the Chinese Communist Party also have huge investments in our energy industry. China's state-owned CGN has a 20% stake in the proposed Sizewell C nuclear plant in Suffolk. In fact, Chinese investors have amassed nearly £134 billion worth of assets in key UK industries. 134 billion quid. This includes energy companies, transport hubs, breweries and schools. Nearly 200 British companies are either controlled by groups or individuals based in China and Hong Kong, or they are significant investors. The Chinese have got stakes in Heathrow Airport, Northumbrian Water, pub retailer Green King and Superdrug, to name but a few. China pour millions into our universities. What could be motivating that investment? Propaganda and influence, perchance? They've even invested in 17 private schools in this country. China investing in our schools. Creepy. Plus, they own huge swathes of commercial and residential property across the UK. Big landowners here in Britain. Chinese investors regularly buy entire apartment complexes and office blocks off plan before they've even been built. They are major investors, for example, in the £1.35 billion walkie-talkie building in central London. Look at that. They spent all that money. It's still wonky. They also invested in the Royal Albert Dock in Liverpool. Yes, indeed, the Chinese have got money to burn. And of course, we are reliant on China for hundreds of billions of pounds worth of cheap consumer goods, clothing, technology, those wretched environmentally unfriendly face masks, COVID testing kits and Perspex screens, which are filling our oceans with plastic. But any attempt to control China are too little too late. China's influence on this country and across the world is a genie that is now out of the lamp. China cannot be controlled or dictated to. That ship has passed. And within the next three decades, China will become the world's biggest economic superpower, overtaking America. The pandemic, and in particular those ruinous experimental and scientifically debatable lockdowns in the US, the UK and across Europe, have doubtless accelerated China's rise. China has done well out of the pandemic. It has become stronger as we in the West have become weaker. And what about the coronavirus pandemic, which originated, you guessed it, in China? The lies, cover-ups and obfuscation in the early stages of the pandemic, with medics in Wuhan drawing attention to this new virus, 
quite literally disappearing from public view. Now, their approach at the beginning sowed the seeds for what would be a catastrophic disaster for the world, drawn out over two years and beyond. We will be paying the health, societal and economic cost for the rest of our lives, which is good news for China, who, be clear, wish us ill. The theory that COVID came from a lab in Wuhan would have got you cancelled and dismissed as a conspiracy theorist a year ago, but is now considered a likely scenario by the American authorities. So rather than sucking up to China and taking them out for dinner in the House of Commons and giving their children plum jobs in Parliament, we should be standing up to China and seeking not just answers about COVID, but compensation and contrition for what they've done. Although the Americans and their esteemed health chief, Dr. Anthony Fauci, may have some responsibility too, if it was US public money that was behind this controversial gain or function research at the lab in Wuhan. We potentially have a man-made virus created by the Chinese and paid for by the Americans. Welcome to hell. But armchair critics of America, of whom there are too many, be careful what you wish for. The United States is a freedom-loving democracy, a global beacon of economic and human liberty. So when there's an inevitable transfer of power, and when the world's foremost economic superpower is an unelected cabal of ruthless, ruthless communists who have total contempt for human rights, free speech and democracy, who preside over a culture of economic and political corruption, the implications for the world are seismic. The cruelty of this regime knows no bounds, evidenced in the horrific footage of Uyghur Muslims being carted off to camps to be enslaved, punished and, in inverted commas, re-educated. Which is why great nations like the United States and the United Kingdom have got to understand and identify the threat by a country with which, whether we like it or not, we must do business. A rogue state, it may be, an international bad actor it certainly is, but China is now a necessary evil and we have to make the relationship work. But we can only do so if Western democracies work together and get stronger together to face off the bullies of Beijing. And the answer is for all of us in the West to stop squabbling about statues and pronouns and divisive identity politics and actually deal with the threat from China by focusing on energy independence and sensible economic policies that reduce our national debt and generate economic growth which will pay not just for a better, fairer and happier society, but a safer one too. Cyber security and defence have been overlooked for too long and they've seen underinvestment. Now, China is an amazing culture and a fabulous people of almost one and a half billion. But it's led by a consortium of men in grey suits who have already, already taken back Hong Kong. They're illegally occupying Tibet against the wishes of its people. And they've now got their eyes on Taiwan and who knows where next. China is here and here to stay. And it's partly of our own making. Chinese whispers are now a shout. We've had too much bull from the China shop. It's no longer China in your hands. We are in theirs.